All right, so I'm going to open up and disassemble this Acer, let's see, Nitro 5 AN515-53 series model N17C1. All right, so first what we're going to do is remove all the screws. They look like PH1 or JS1 screws. Okay, so let's remove all these screws. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths, so it's important. Try and keep all those screws together, all right? Okay, let me make sure because some of these things look like there might be screws there, but there aren't. Again, you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths, and if you mix them up, you can actually damage your computer. Okay, so we got those. We're going to go ahead and go across. The way I keep them in order is I kind of like follow the pattern of the screws and I try and put them in the same order so these ones are kind of like in between but um I should I'll just like put a line if I can so as you can see there's kind of a line here this one goes a little bit further so I'll put it in the lower and then this one goes kind of across from there so to keep myself from getting confused I'll put those in the like right next to each other these next to each other Okay. This computer, um, if it's having issues, not uh, if it's not turning on, there's a little hole here. This is a battery or CMOS reset button. You can use a needle and you can press and hold that for about 10 to 15 seconds to drain the power from that. And sometimes that will allow you to reset the BIOS. So this screw looks like it's staying in. So I'm going to leave that there. All right, then we're gonna go to the bottom. There's one more screw here that we can remove. I don't know if this screw is actually stuck. Okay, actually, nope, it came out. So we took that screw out as well. So I'm kind of putting this in rows of four. So there's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we got one, two, three, four. And then down here we got five. So this is the only row that's different so far. All right, and this is how I keep track of the screws. If you're doing this, you can actually record while you do it too to kind of keep track if it helps. But um, again, I just put it in the pattern that I remove them. The screws all do appear to be the same size, but again, it's always a good idea to keep them in order just in case there are differences. And if you mix them up, um, you can actually damage the computer depending on what's going on with the screws. All right, so we got all those screws out. We're gonna remove these covers. So just use your fingernail and then pop this up just like that. Okay, it comes out like that. So when you put it back, you put this side in like that and then you can pop this down. But anyways, we're gonna take this out. Looks like they're only using one stick of RAM. So you can actually add a second one to this slot up here. So the RAM is like this. You pull the two tabs to the side and then here you can see um, 8 gigs PC4 2400T. So you can get two 16 gig sticks, um, but make sure it's PC4 2400T. You can get another 8 gig stick to round it off to 16 gigs. Um, but yeah, you want to have even amounts. It, if you put like an 8 gig and a 16 gig, then you kind of lose some performance. Um, so it's always good to have like matching sticks. I haven't like really done a benchmark to compare it or notice, but Normally you would want to have matching sticks. All right, so same thing with this cover We're gonna pull up this corner. It swings over to the left this way So same thing you would put the left side in and then you would push this back down if you're gonna put the cover back on And you got a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. So we're gonna disconnect this All right, let's remove these screws Again, keep them in order. I don't know why one screw is missing from here. Um, I would assume there's supposed to be four screws there, but uh, for some reason, one is missing right there. Okay. And, of course, make sure your computer is off before you start doing all of this. If you didn't already, hopefully you did. All right. Once you remove those four screws, you can lift up the hard drive. Um, they have these little tabs to help you lift it up, but sometimes it's tough to lift up from there. So if you have trouble lifting up those tabs, what you can do, if you have like a slightly smaller screwdriver, I use like a T8, you can get access to this screwdriver or the screw hole here for the hard drive, and you can use that as a lever to lift it up just like that. Okay, 
So you can see you can lift that up. Let me zoom this in a little bit. All right, and then you have to pull this connector off while you remove the hard drive. So I use my fingernail to kind of pull that. Here you can see the connector slides up. All right, and then we can remove it like that. You have to remove that, otherwise you'll break that cable there. So you can upgrade this to a two and a half inch SATA hard drive S or SSD. Um, you just want to transfer this bracket over. There's four screws. And I recommend cloning over the hard drive to the new drive preferably an SSD if you want to upgrade all right okay so if you don't clone it then you'll have to get another um, what do you call you'll have to get a Windows USB installer to do it all right so we got all of that now let's see how we can pop off the cover here so first thing you want to do is look for a gap so here I can see a gap between the base and the palm rest there Okay, so when I see a gap like that, what I do is I'll try and angle it in a way that makes it easy for me to get my fingernails in. So right here, I cut my fingernails a bit shorter, so this might be difficult. But anyways, you get in the gap here. Let me zoom out a little more. Oh wait, let me zoom out to where you can actually see everything again. There we go. Alright, so like this. So for this model, because the gap is here, what I like to do is get my fingernails in the gap and then use my thumb on the back to kind of push. So here you can see the clips release. All right, and we can remove the thing that way. So once you unclip that side, you wanna rotate it so you can close the screen. Rotate this, go to the sides, and same thing, get your fingernails in there, and then push on the back with your thumbs. So you can try and, you can use pry tools to do this, but I find that this works way easier. So a lot of people get annoyed by my fingernails, but it makes doing this kind of work way easier. So that's why I kind of leave them long. All right, so again, go around and then do that. Huh, one of these clips came off. Throw that away. All right, so once you unclip like around here in the front, you should be able to kind of lift this up and wiggle it around and slowly pull this cover out. So here you can see, this is what the cover looks like underneath. It's not really that dusty, but I'm gonna take it out and clean it later. All right, so they said the fans were being noisy, so I'm gonna have to try and figure out which fan is noisy. Oh, I'm gonna clean this out first because it's dusty, so I don't wanna get all that dust in here. But um, we'll go over the components first. Here you can see the battery, let's zoom in. So the battery connector is here. To remove that, you just go with your fingernails or tweezers or whatever. Fingernails work better, or if you have plastic tweezers, you can go on these corners and you kind of just wiggle it as you pull, just like this. So slowly wiggle it and you can see the battery slowly comes out. And then usually as a safety precaution after disconnecting the battery, you wanna open the computer up and then press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds, all right? This will drain any power and will reduce the risk of damaging anything on the motherboard, okay? So there we go, hold that 10 to 15 seconds. Again, I don't know why one screw was missing from the hard drive. I don't know if they just didn't put it in from the factory or if it fell somewhere in here. Hopefully it didn't fall somewhere in here. Yep, I don't see it in here, so it should be okay. All right, so we got the battery here and the battery model number, if you can read it, AC14B8K. So if you need to replace the battery, it looks like there's just two screws here holding it in place. I don't wanna take out extra stuff if I don't have to, but I guess the battery I'll do just cause it's simple. So there's one screw there. Let me zoom out again. Okay, so I'll remove these two screws. I'll put them back later. This rubber piece for the speaker is kind of coming out. Kind of, let's try and put that back in, but. All right, let's see. So the speakers, they don't have any screws holding them. They're just using these rubber things. So I'm gonna try and fix this rubber piece here. All right, squeeze that, put that in place. There we go. And then you kind of just push it back down there. So I fixed that rubber piece that was kind of coming out. Anyways, the battery. We should be able to lift this up. Oh, they put some adhesive here. So you want to be careful because they actually taped the battery connector also to the keyboard connector. So it's a little bit risky. You want to hold down the keyboard connector and slowly peel up this adhesive. There we go. There we go. Now we can lift the battery up at an angle like that and we can pull it out. So this is gross too. So I'm going to clean that. <clears throat> 
Here you can see the trackpad connector, keyboard connector, keyboard backlight connector. You got this little connector that's up here. I'm not sure if that's for an LED or what. Um, I don't use this computer. It's a customer's computer. All these computers I work on are customer's computers. So I don't know what these, if it is an LED, then, then you would see an LED. I don't really see an LED on here, so I don't know what that's for. Um, anyways, uh, speakers, the wire goes from the speaker to here and they meet towards this spot and then they go up here and they connect underneath it looks like underneath this piece of tape got the dc jack connector here same thing you just grab the connector and wiggle it to pull it out um, then the dc jack actually sits right here it looks like you can just kind of wiggle it to pull it up yep if you need to take it out i'm going to leave that in there but the charge dc jack charge port looks very easy to replace you got this usb ports with the headphone jack here if you need to replace that there's one more screw holding that you should be able to lift this board out all these connectors are very similar you flip the little tab up and then you can pull the connector out and then basically you just put it back in so took it out just like that and then you can put it back in and let's see here all right, then you just put it back in with the tab up and then push that back down. The keyboard one, it has these little wings. You pull it out and then after you slide that, this little bracket out, you can pull the connector out. I don't want to take everything out because it can risk damaging things, even though it's pretty safe to do. But yeah, so you got this as well. You got the heat sink here. This is the GPUs under here and then the CPUs under here. And then there's also these little um, thermal pads underneath. So if you lift this up, you want to be very careful because if you mess up these thermal pads, you're going to have to buy new thermal pads before you can put it back. And you also have to redo the thermal paste. Every time you take out the heat sink, you want to redo the thermal paste. The heat pads, you can actually reuse them if you didn't damage them. Then you got the LCD LVDS connector here, which is this for the screen. If you're going to remove this, make sure that you disconnected the battery and press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds. If you don't, you can risk damaging the backlight circuit. Then you got the M.2, uh, this is a PCIe NVMe SSD. It looks like they upgraded this because the computer wouldn't come with a Samsung uh, a 970 Evo, at least I wouldn't think so. But there's one screw, take that out, it'll lift up and then you can pull it back. Then you got also a CMOS uh, or the BIOS battery here. Same thing, grab the wings and just wiggle it. To put it back, you just squeeze the two pieces together. Anyways, I'm gonna clean the dust out from inside here because I have to fix the fans. Um, and then I will be back. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So I cleaned out the fans. I couldn't really tell which one's bad though. Let me see here. It seems perfectly fine. Let's see here. Hmm. They seem perfectly fine. That's really strange. All right, so anyways, let's see here. So the fans, plastic on top, and then they most likely slide out underneath. So these metal pieces I can likely leave there. If I want, I can actually take, let's see, I can probably take the whole fan out. So let's zoom in. Um, yeah, I guess I'll peel that off. Okay, so let's get the screwdriver. I'm going to take these fan screws out. Alright, looks like there's two screws holding each fan. Hopefully the fans will just come out after I remove these two screws. Fans don't seem that bad, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, let's peel off this adhesive here. All right, so we're gonna get this out of the way. And then we're gonna remove the fan connector here. So again, I just use my fingernails on the wings. Let's see if I can move this. This fan's kind of in the way. All right, so anyways, get the wings and then you kind of just wiggle, wiggle it as you pull and it eventually pops out just like that, all right? There we go, got this one out. Let's see if we can actually peel this adhesive up and then just take the fan out. Okay, I got this plastic tool. I wonder if this will help, but normally 
I would just use my fingernail underneath. Let's see if this will actually make it easier. Okay, this actually works pretty well. So I'm going to use this to get the adhesive out. Okay, just like that. And you can kind of use this to help scrape it up or pry it up a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm going to do that over here as well. Okay, and if you guys are wondering what this is, this is a plastic razor blade that I got on Amazon. All right, if you want, I can post a link below. Just let me know. But uh, it does make it a little bit easier, though. I like to actually peel this up like this. Okay. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we should have access to both fans. We do have to disconnect this fan as well. So let's pull this out, okay. And it feels like that's taped, so we're gonna disconnect this cable. Let's flip this latch up, okay. Just like that, and then we can pull this connector out. And yeah, tape is on this connector, so you're gonna wanna get this adhesive off, just like that. All right, and then the fan connector comes out, same thing, grab the wings and just wiggle it and it pops out. And if you're wondering if you took it out already, the fan goes with this side up where you can actually see the exposed metal pins of the fan connector. The other side, as you can see, is solid white. Okay, we'll take that out, we'll set that aside, take that out. Here you can see even after cleaning it up, like giant balls of dust are still stuck in there. Okay, so make sure you clean it out really well this out okay I should probably clean this out better I'm gonna just use a toothbrush and then use my air blower and get it out okay just like that there we go all right so now we'll use this and blow the dust out wow there's a lot of dust stuck in there okay and same thing with the fans you can see it's kind of dusty Okay, I can tell this is the bad this is the bad fan because while I'm blowing this, I can actually feel it's like um, not smooth. Actually, both fans do it, so I guess we'll work on both fans. Okay, so what we're gonna do looks like these fans are exactly the same. Let's see, DC twenty eight. DC, oh nope, they're, oh wait, DFS541105, FC0T, DC2800, JRF0. So yeah, these fans are exactly the same models. So if you want to replace them, they're exactly the same. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside for now and we're gonna go ahead and see about repairing the fan now. Okay, so the way I repair these fans, you'll need a metal razor blade, not a plastic one. Okay, let me get a black mat so you can see better. Okay, so we'll put this here and hopefully that will help with the brightness issue. All right, so what we do, um, we get a razor blade and here you can see there are these little plastic tabs and we're gonna basically just cut these plastic tabs off, okay? So just get the razor blade and then we're going to cut these plastic tabs. Okay, just like that. And we're going to do this with all, all of the tabs. All right, so there's one, two, three, four. All right, so we're going to cut all four tabs off. You want to be careful cutting this. I'm sawing it off slowly like this. You don't want to just like slice into it because then if you go, you can actually end up cutting yourself with the razor blade. All right, someone's calling, but I'm gonna have to ignore it for now. All right, and be careful with this cable, it's kind of getting in the way. So I'm gonna go more to this side since that cable's in the way. And actually, let me do it this way if I can. All right, we're just gonna cut this thing off. All right, and then the last plastic tab here. And hopefully this fan will be repairable. There we go. 
Okay, so we got all those plastic tabs off. Once you get those off, you can see this metal plate comes off. You can clean this up. I'm going to just brush it off in the trash. Hmm, it looks like they got some something stuck in here because that's not actually dust. It's like sticker residue or something. It's gross. Anyways, I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. Okay. Get that. And I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and just add that to the paper towel and we're going to clean this. Hopefully this will actually clean off. Looks like it's cleaning off. Okay, so we got that out. That might actually be what was kind of causing some issues along with all the dust. All right, so once we got that, hopefully we can just pull these propeller blades off and no, we cannot. So these propeller blades are secured on there pretty tight. So let's see if we can add grease to the back. I doubt it. Um, it does have plastic under here, so I could possibly um, use a drill to drill through, but I'm gonna try this method first, which is to pop the propeller blades off. So let's see if I can't pull this. So you wanna be careful because you want to actually apply even pressure. I need actually a tool that can reach all the way into the propeller area here. And then that, like, it wraps around. Like, I can, it has, like, an L shape. And then if I can get that and then wrap it all the way around in a circle and then just pull that up, that would be the best kind of tool for this kind of fan repair. But I don't have anything like that. I'll have to see if there's a way I can make something. But so what I'm going to do now is use this. I have this magnet tray. And what I do here is I just check if I can fit these things here. Okay, like that. And I'll use the magnet to kind of help hold these up in place. And then I will do this. So kind of line it up. You want to line up these things. It's hard for me to see where it is. Maybe the silver ones will work better. Yeah, the gray one is hard for me to see. But uh, basically, you line these up, okay, like this. And if you get even pressure all the way around, you can kind of sometimes push this all the way through. So let's see if I can get that done. I'm going to try and line these all up. Okay, so oops, once you get all three lined up. It's a little tricky trying to get all three. Sorry, my head's getting in the way. It's hard for me to see what I'm doing when I'm trying to record it. But there you go, get all three lined up and then just push on this slowly. And hopefully we can pop it out. There we go. So now we got the fan out. So here we got the propeller, okay? And again, ideally you wouldn't want to use this kind of method to pop this out, but it's what I have and it works. Ideally, if you can, you can get like, um, I'd probably have to make something like that, but something that's like L-shaped, um, basically a metal tool with like several things that kind of, you can roll them out into a circle. And I'll have to see if I can make something like that. Then that would make doing these fan repairs a lot easier. So I'll design something in a bit, uh, probably in the next few days or weeks. And we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to clean the dust off. Okay, so just like with every other fan repair, what you want to do, um, clean off the shaft of the fan. Okay. And then what I do is I use... Um, Mobile One synthetic mobile oil, motor oil. You can use, as long as it's a good um, lubricating oil that doesn't go bad quick, you can use that. Don't use like cooking oil or WD-40. Um, that stuff will actually get gunky really fast and your fan will actually become worse. So what I do is I get the motor oil, I dip a needle in there, and then I'll just take the drop of oil and drip it into um, the bearing or the sleeve, whatever that is. Sometimes there's no bearings in it. And then I'll just drop this in, give it a spin. I don't want to push it down yet until I make sure everything's good. Okay, and then usually after that I'll lift it back out, get the paper towel, clean it off one time. 
Okay, and then I'll add another drop of oil just to make sure that the oil that's in there is clean. All right, so again, get some more oil. Oops. All right, and just drop it in there. There we go. Get that, put this back on top. Spin that around. Depending how, um, how badly they might need the computer, um, usually I won't try pulling the propellers off if it's stuck like that, um, unless it's like a really emergency and the fan really isn't working. Um, this one, because it has two fans, then I could um, essentially use one fan to cool the computer if I were to accidentally break one, so it's not as big of a deal. And then we can wait for the replacement fan. But right now it looks like I can repair the fan. So it should be good. All right. So the fan is spinning okay. And the way you know the fan is good, if you kind of spin it, you can see how easily it wobbles back and forth. That's how you know the fan is well lubricated. Okay. So we're going to take this metal plate and put it back on top. And then because we cut off the plastic, I like to use tape to hold this back in place, okay? So just get some tape here, okay? Grab some tape, okay? And then I'm gonna cut some pieces of tape here. So just get a piece of tape, cut it. And then you don't have to put it right over the plastic parts that we cut, but near it, okay? So just over here, put some tape back on it. Wrap that back over, make sure it's not covering the propeller blades. Okay, same thing, go to the other side. All right, get some tape, put it near the plastic piece we cut off and wrap it over, just like that. And then I'm gonna get two more pieces. Okay. Find where the plastic is. Again, we're not going to be able to put it like right exactly over it, so you don't have to. Just get it near. Okay, and this is just so that metal plate stays in place and doesn't come out. And then this one, we'll just put it right here. Okay. Just like that. So there we go. We repaired one of the fans. Now we got to do this with the other fan. Okay. Same thing. Oops, we don't need that yet. Same thing, cut off these little plastic feet first, okay? And these fans are really easy to replace, so depending on the cost, you can actually just buy replacements and swap them because this kind of repairing these fans is a little tricky. So yeah, if you want, um, the safest way is to just buy replacement fans and do that. All right, go. All right, and the last plastic piece. Let's cut that. Probably need new razor blades. This one's kind of getting a little hard to cut. Okay, oops, I didn't cut that one all the way. All right, there we go. Take the metal plate off just like the other one. Okay. Same thing, if it's dirty in here, just clean it up. This one's actually not that bad. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off as well. Okay, and then same thing to get this propeller out. Okay, I'm gonna use this magnet tray again, and we'll use this again. I think I, oh, okay, it's like I lost one, all right. So again, you want to try and get it towards the bigger sides. You want as much even pressure as you can, depending on the propeller blades. If they're too spread out or too thin, you can actually break these propeller blades pretty easily. So you want to be careful, okay? So I'm going to put this here. All right, it's hard for me to see where. I'm going to have to look over the top. Sorry, my head's going to be in the way. Okay, just like that, we got those two, and then we'll get the last one in. And 
I'm sorry, I know my head's going to be in the way, but I have to look over the top, otherwise I will not be able to line it up right. Okay, so there we go, we got those three lined up. I'm going to try and push it through and push slowly. Come on, oh, there we go. Okay, so depending on how the motor's made, sometimes this might be too fragile and then the thing might crack here. So if you're gonna attempt this method, just know to be careful and ha be ready. If you're gonna need your computer, make sure buy backup fans just in case, okay? So let's put this stuff back here. All right, so we got this fan out. We're gonna do the same thing. Just clean off the shaft of the fan. All right, I'm gonna clean this dust off here. Okay, and this is risky. These fans, sometimes they're pretty cheap, like five to $10, and other times they can be expensive, like 20 to $60. So um, depending on your the cost of the fans and things, you can decide whether it's worth it to try it. Um, I mean, you don't lose anything if you're going to have to buy a fan anyways, so might as well try it. The only thing is make sure that you have, that you don't, you won't need your computer for a while. Because if your fan is broken and you try and use it, then you're going to overheat your computer. So make sure that you have time to get, get a new fan if, if you do accidentally break it. All right. So there we go. Just added some grease in there. Put the fan on loosely, spin it around. Same thing, take it back out, clean this off. Okay, and then add a little more grease. Too much, there we go. Just get a little drop in there. All right, so you got that. Clean this up. Okay, so let's put this back together. All right, push that down, it's holding in place again. Spin it, make sure it's good. You can see it does the nice wobble. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's put the metal plate back on. Make sure that it sits down flat, okay. Put this away. Again, I need to design some kind of tool to make this easier, but there we go. I don't do this that often, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I need to buy some metal like brackets. I think I know what to use. Um, the desktops come with some metal brackets that might work well for this, so um, maybe I'll try and get those metal brackets and use them in the future. We'll see. All right, so again, just cut some pieces of tape here. Okay. Make sure that it's sandwiched down properly. Then just put the tape on, wrap it over. Same thing with the other side. Tape on, wrap it over. Make sure the fan spins okay that you didn't bend this metal piece. Okay. This one, same thing. Okay, and there we go. So we repaired all, all fans, okay. So that's the proper way to fix these fans is to pop these off and add grease. But again, it is possible that you can peel this out. On some of them, you can't pop the fan out and then you'll have to drill a hole in the back of this plastic piece and you can actually add grease there. But be careful because there's like a white, um, I think it's Teflon or something. A little disc that helps keep the friction down and if you lose that disc or if it comes out then you're probably gonna want to replace the fan all right anyways let's zoom back out put this isopropyl all the way okay so now we're gonna take the computer back out all right. get the 
fans. Let's move that out of the way. All right. So now we're just going to put the fans back in. So let's see. This one's there, I think. And this one's there. Yep. All right. So it doesn't matter which fan goes where, but the cables are already bent a certain way. So I kind of just want to put them back in the same spot. All right, and then the nicest way to reconnect these, get them in the slot, okay. And let's see if I can do it, all right. You kind of want to put some pressure on the back of the connector when you plug it in, because sometimes if you push this too hard and the solder here is not good, you can actually rip the connector off the board. So it's always good to kind of hold that down, all right. So now we got that in place. We'll just get tuck that cable around, get the fan back in. There we go. Then same thing with this one. Get the cable out of the or the tape out of the way. All right. Push on both sides. Just like that. Make sure it's nice and snug. You can put the tape back if you want. All right. So now we'll put back these screws. And usually what I'll do is, oh, let me zoom in. I'll loosely fit these screws first. Okay. Just like this. And after that, I'll actually squeeze the fan to the radiator as I tighten them down. As I tighten the screws down, okay. Oops. Just like that. Okay, same with this fan. Make sure there's no cables trapped underneath that you're smashing. Okay. All right, and then after that, oops, make sure that you put the adhesive back over the top. Just like that, push it all down. This helps keep the airflow um, into the heat sink, so you do want to make sure this adhesive is push down. If it doesn't want to go down all the way, you could always just add some tape on top. So if it's sticking up, just put some new tape on top and it should be fine. You don't need any special tape, but uh, preferably a tape that won't get all gross and gunky when you have to take it back out. All right, so now let's put back the battery. Let's zoom out. Okay, so the battery again, let's put the bottom corner in first because it has these little feet here. Okay. All right, and these little feet go into the corners down here. Then let the battery go down. Make sure that these little screw mount things line up. Okay, we'll put back the screws for the battery. Don't forget to plug in any other cables you removed, like this one. Make sure to get it lined up and it should go in pretty easily. Come on. Why is it being so difficult to line up? I might have to disconnect the other side because it's hard to do this with this angle. Okay, so I'm disconnecting this side. And then this one because it's like bent weird, it makes it harder. So. Make sure this is clean. There's some stuff stuck on it. Okay. Actually, let me zoom in so you can see better. Make sure the latch is up. Line it up. Get the cable in. This one's being a pain. There we go. Okay. And then put that latch down. All right. I don't know why that was so difficult. Okay. Then you got this one should be way easier just line it up yep push that down there we go then the battery connector same thing line it up make sure you have this side up they put a dot on here you don't want these metal pins facing up or you'll fry the whole motherboard okay so just like that then squeeze this in just like that we got it all connected take this cover oops let me zoom back out okay take the cover and then you can kind of put the back in first if you want. It doesn't really matter, I believe, on this model. And then just snap everything down. Okay, just 
just like that. All right, so we're gonna put the hard drive back now. Get the hard drive, All right? Make sure to line it up. And you kind of have to hold this back here. Make sure not to press on the back of the, con the cable connector, just the plastic part here and push that in. All right, I slide the hard drive forward as I just hold that in place. Drop the uh, hard drive down and then put these screws back. Again, I don't know why a screw is missing from here. So, yeah, anyways, put back all these screws. Okay. All right, so we got all those screws in. Then we'll put back these covers. So same thing again, put the left side in first here and then snap it all down. Same thing with this one, put the bottom actually down first. Wait, was it the bottom? Where's the screw hole for this? Oh, I'm doing it upside down, sorry. The top in first and then drop this down. Make sure to kind of, sometimes you have to flex the middle up to push the side stuff in, just like that. Jeez, I'm getting like a million calls right now. And then we just put back all the screws. Okay, one, two. And hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. This screw's kind of tough to put in for some reason. Let me make sure it's clipped down all the way. Okay, everything is clipped in. So I don't know why this screw is so difficult to put back, but all right, tighten that in. Again, that's all there is. Hopefully it helped. Like, subscribe, help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. You're welcome to stay while I put back all the rest of the screws. But that's pretty much all there is. Okay, let's put four more here. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.